Hi everybody, it's Monday and this is Safia. Um, I am currently sitting in a tree in um, Virginia Beach. We are camping, we camped last night at uh, the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia Beach, um, which is one of our stops on our road trip. So anyway, today is Monday and this week we're talking about surgery for week 62. So, um, I think this conversation is really important to have and it's really important for us as partners to share this information um, about surgery and what our partners have done or are planning to do and how they've gone about it because um, as much information as we can get about out to each other um, and as much as we can share our experiences I think that just really helps to build community and I know that I for one am really looking for that um, to be supported in that. So. I wanted to actually start talking about surgery by kind of widening the conversation a little bit, widening, widening the discussion about surgery, um, and just talk about how um, a lot of folks who identify as trans do desire surgery um, of some sort, whether that's top surgery, bottom surgery, both, hysterectomy, uh, that kind of, all, all of those kind of things. but. I do feel the need to point out that not everyone who identifies as trans has the desire to alter their body in, um, um, in a surgical way. And that, you know, I personally do know folks who identify as genderqueer or um, as trans and don't have the desire, at least not right now, and say that they don't have the desire at all to have surgery of any sort, or actually even take hormones, but they do identify as trans. So being such an umbrella term, I just wanted to kind of bring up that um, not everyone wants surgery. Um, and for everyone who does, that's that's great. Because I do see it as a way to really align the body and identity. Um, but the other thing is that even if someone desires the surgery, they may not have access to it. And I know that the U.S. right now is going through a lot of health care changes, um, but there are a lot of folks who don't have health care at all, um, and definitely not insurance that would cover surgery, and that there are a lot of issues facing trans community, and, um, you know, for trans youth, homelessness is a huge issue, and so if, if there's a trans individual who's living on the street, their top priority might be getting off the street instead of surgery. So I just want to kind of say all that just to say that this conversation, I want this conversation to be wider and not just assume that being trans equals having surgery. Um, and just to kind of create that space for everyone who doesn't fit into that exactly um, to still feel a part of this conversation. So anyway, all of that being said, um, Mel does want to have top surgery. And as of right now, that's the only surgery Mel wants to have. Um, so that's something we've been talking about a lot because Mel wanted top surgery and would have preferred to have top surgery, you know, a long time ago, even more than wanting to start um, hormone therapy. But um, the way that it worked out is that because our county in our Buncombe, Buncombe County in Asheville, North Carolina, um, provides really low cost health care to trans individuals that does include hormone therapy, that's something that I was able to do, but surgery has not been an option yet. So it's something we're talking about a lot um, and something that we're working towards, saving up money for and that kind of thing. Um, so Mel wants to, if, if, if uh, Mel could have any preference about who to go to, go to, to have surgery, it would be Dr. Garamoni. Um, and I know that's a pretty popular name in the trans community and a lot of folks have had surgery from Dr. Garamoni and I think Mel is really interested in um, his results um, that so Mel has been able to find pictures of really great results from surgery as well as um, Dr. Garamoni is someone who at least on his website has you know talks about having dedicated his practice to this kind of thing um, and that's really appealing to Mel. So that's who Mel wants to go to. It's something that feels really far off right now because we're making some huge changes. We're going on this road trip. We're moving to New Mexico. We are doing a lot of other things in our life right now that does not mean that we have this big pool of money sitting there to do um, top surgery. So the plan for that, Mel has talked about not wanting to um, use care credit, which I know is an option. Um, in my understanding, 
really brief understanding is that it's kind of like a um, credit card that's based just on um, that can be used only for health care services. So that would be something that Mel could use for the surgery. But the way that Mel feels about it is that they don't want to put their body on a credit card. We're really dedicated to getting out of debt right now and um, not having credit card debt and that kind of thing, school loan debt, all of that. So we are really moving away from that and really wanting to be able to pay for things up front. So um, until that time, Mel's plan is to just keep saving up money um, and has talked a lot about starting up um, their own business, maybe a sort of a trainer, personal trainer type business. Um, so that's something that I was looking into doing, a certification for that and getting moving in that direction and just sort of increasing our financial independence in general and then especially around this kind of thing, not wanting this to be something that we put, that we add our debt, add to our debt. Um, so anyway, that's basically what I want to say about surgery. Unfortunately, with not having had that personal experience in my relationship with my partner, um, you know, I don't know a whole lot about how it goes or the partner's perspective on that. Um, but if you have any questions, you know, feel free to send them to me, um, or private message me. And I hope you guys all have a great week. Okay, take care.